Hi, I'm Dr. Scholz. Let's talk about prostate cancer. In this video, we're going to cover the four main types of treatment for men with prostate cancer. There are four broad categories. Observation alone, local treatments where the therapy is administered to the gland alone, systemic treatments where medicines circulate throughout the whole body, and then combinations of local plus systemic therapies. Men who have prostate cancer and want to pursue active surveillance need to have certain specified criteria, a Gleason 6, possibly certain types of Gleason 7 uh, for their grading, which comes from the biopsy, a PSA that's less than 10, and if the doctor has done a finger exam, he shouldn't be feeling any hard lumps or bumps. Active surveillance for prostate cancer is a very attractive approach because the standard treatments like surgery or radiation can cause very serious side effects, impotence, incontinence, rectal damage that is often irreversible. Men undergoing active surveillance have their blood tested for PSA every three months or so, and if the PSA were to go up to a dramatic degree, then uh, that could suggest there was a problem. Um, more importantly, men are either going to need a periodic prostate biopsy, perhaps every other year, or annual scans with multiparametric MRI. Many men can remain on active surveillance for the remainder of their lives, and that's because the type of cancer that's selected for surveillance is so low grade, it's very unlikely that it will grow or change during a man's normal life expectancy. Men can continue on active surveillance as long as certain things, especially the biopsy, doesn't change. Uh, it is possible for men to develop new cancers that have a higher grade, a Gleason score of 8 or higher, for example, and that is the sort of thing that typically would lead to a man stopping active surveillance. When we start talking about localized treatment, that means a treatment that's directed directly at the prostate gland, we're talking about things like radiation treatments, surgery, or high-intensity focused ultrasound, cryotherapy, which is a type of freezing. The unifying thought is that all the treatments are directed exclusively at the prostate. Local treatments are for men who we consider to have curable cancer, but also have a cancer serious enough to require treatment. Curable cancers are defined by having a PSA of less than 20 or so, and in men who have had scans, bone scans and CAT scans that don't show any enlarged lymph nodes or metastasis in the bones. Although it's often very slow growing, over a period of many years it can spread and become incurable. The threat is not as immediate as it is with other cancers, but there is a threat. Surgery of the prostate is an intricate and challenging operation that's usually done robotically these days. The short-term side effects from the operation itself are pretty tolerable. However, there can be some long-term issues related to recovery of sexual and urinary function. So radiation therapy for prostate cancer comes in two broad categories, beam radiation and seed implant radiation. Seed implant radiation involves putting radioactive seeds inside the prostate in an operative procedure. Beam radiation involves going to a specialized facility where they transmit the beam sort of like a regular x-ray but it's aimed at the prostate in high doses, requiring multiple visits to the facility over a period of weeks or even a couple months. Systemic therapy for prostate cancer is superior to systemic therapy for any other type of cancer. Hormone treatments alone can put a man into remission for an average of 10 years, even when they have a relapsed type of prostate cancer. That's quite remarkable, but we have a number of other systemic therapies that are also very effective. Injectable radiation, immunotherapy, and a variety of different types of chemotherapies. Chemotherapies that on the whole are generally quite well tolerated. Combination therapy for prostate cancer involves both treatment with radiation or surgery, a local treatment to cure the cancer inside the prostate, and a systemic treatment that circulates in the bloodstream 
to cure any potential cancer outside the prostate. This type of treatment is used for men that are considered to be high risk. In other words, they have PSAs over 20 or Gleason scores that are eight or higher. When men have high risk prostate cancer, combination therapy improves their chance for cure, perhaps as much as 15 to 30 percent. So if they were to have only surgery or only radiation without any systemic treatment, without any hormone treatment, for example, their cure rates would be lower. The most common combination therapy is some form of radiation administered with some form of hormone treatment. Typically, the hormone treatment starts a couple months before the radiation. The hormone treatment continues through the radiation and beyond. Depending on how serious the cancer is, the hormone therapy may continue for only a couple months or it may go on for a full year after the radiation. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to our channel. And if you need more information, go to PCRI.org. Thank you.